Hi, um, I'm really honored to be here. I'm delighted to be reading with Forrest. I've been a fan of his work for a long time. And I'm just really happy to see so many uh, friends and familiar faces. So I'll get the ball rolling with the poetry dance. Um, and you'll quickly figure out that it's improvisational. Yes, it's kind of like boot up. Um, and I will just start uh, with the first, ball, first poem in my book, Sky Equals Empty. I um, got a scholarship to study in Japan, Mambu Kagakusho. It's a research fellowship. I was at an art school. I studied at a, did intensive language study at a university, and then I went to art school. I really thought, you know, I'll go to Japan, and I'll, I'll go to this art school, and then in about six months, when I can read and write Japanese, I'll switch into literature. <laughs> that was the plan. Um, so this poem uh, is a, starts with, the title is actually a phrase from kind of like an outdated, awkward um, Japanese English phrase book. It starts, Osora wa toto mo tobe nai. Oh sky, a little bit even, fly not. You can move between French and English, put the table in the kitchen, and the soft red chair by the window. But with Japanese, you can't bring what you already have. Like the words you, me, or how to count, one bed, two chairs, three days. An airplane takes off from Sacramento. I lie at an angle so I can see the fig tree out the window. Arms for wings, ears for songs, three days for water, sleep for sleep, chocolate for chocolate, vodka for vodka, kanji for death, death for surrender, surrender for sleep and 10,000 years. The sky is, O oh, for honorific, a little bit, silent syllable, even, I implied cannot fly. I cannot fly in the sky at all. So I'm kind of struggling with translation and meaning making here. And um, this next poem is uh, also a translation, a working with translation. And uh, it's a poem that uh, I wrote at Squaw Valley Community of Writers, which is uh, one of the near, a uh, uh, community very near and dear to my heart. <coughs> it's called, <clears throat> and what I'm giving is possible translations of the same basho haiku. It's called Zen Monks Talking Big. Inazuma ni satoranu hito no tatosa yo. Basho played softball, second base. He also slept with the nuns and had to leave town. Drank sake in rice fields, talked to spiders and half moons and cobwebs, laughed at the rain, getting his sleeping mat wet. Watching the lightning, those who share simply are noble. Inazuma, night lightning, ni, with. Satora, enlightened, realized. Nu, not, hito, people. No, possessive. Tatosa, honorable or noble. Yo, yo. I repeat, yo means yo. <laughs> Highbrow talk over the lightning. Such a pity. Um, I'll read, um, Forrest, you're going to come up with one more poem. Um, I'm going to read a poem called Riverbed, and um, there's a, a syllable in Japanese, there's a, a letter, tsu, it's a little kind of symbol, and when you write it small, it marks a, 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 a syllable count in a word, but it has no sound. You might liken it to a glottal stop, which is not a very romantic name. <laughs> but so there's no pronunciation, we just call that a small tsu, and uh, that's the concept that this poem comes out of. Riverbed. If it's not yarrow laid in fields, your hands on the seam of my shirt, your eyes a clothesline reeling me in. 
then there must be a way to write a silent syllable that measures the distance between words or counts space in the air. If it's not the lilt of your voice, your clothes in a pile, then write this as a pause or a dash or a skipped page. From the upstairs window into the yard, not facing up to the way our bodies become frail. Jordan, named after a river. Why not some other name? A still body of water. One that could freeze and thaw. One that could take the winter back in spring. Fun to be here with Judy. I really like the occasion. I'm going to focus on, um, and thank you. Where did Catherine look like she is? Hi. Thank you for having us. And I'm going to focus on, uh, on Japanese um, translations and Japanese. Everything's going to have something to do with Japan. Um, so I'll start out with a, with a poem in Japanese, which is a little tanka, um, and, um, which I uh, love for the sound of it, which is communicable whether or not you, you speak Japanese. Um, and the last, um, so it's five, seven, five, seven, seven, you'll be able to hear those syllables. And in the last seven, it'll sound, um, well, I'm going to make sure it doesn't sound like this, but it, it seems like it's missing uh, a syllable. It's Osaka, um, Osaka no seki. Um, so it seems like it's six syllables. But the old way of saying Osaka in Japanese, um, Doubles the uh, doubles the the o, so it's a um, and and that's the sound that's most pronounced in the poem, which is a poem about people leaving each other and grief. So it's all this o that you hear. Kuri yako no, yuku mo, kaeru mo, wakarete wa, shiru mo, shiranu mo. Osaka no seki. <laughs> and then um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a poem by a friend of mine, um, a, a writer in the San Francisco area named Peter, Peter Weltner. And this is from one of his most recent books, To the Final Cinder, Throwing a Wreath into Pearl Harbor. Pearl is burning. As Saipan's planes burn, civilians hiding in caves, shooting, strangling their children, leaping from cliffs, innocents, the thousands dying in mass suicides, burns on the day when General Saito proclaims to his men, in death there is life, and with his ceremonial sword commits seppuku as an adjutant shoots him, burns by bullet and knife when an officer kills his men beheading them, who began to die when their zeros hit Pearl. It's the way of wars never to end. No soldier can surrender. The men struck at dawn at Pearl or under the midday glare on the Batan Road are there for the slaughter over and over. All violence is prophecy. Pearl burns, so Okinawa burns. Now is then. Nagasaki. That's Peter Weltner. And maybe I'll read two more and then shift back to, to Judy. Um, this is a poem from a, um, an older book of mine called Deeds of Utmost Kindness. And it's, a, it's just a single sentence. The silence in another world. In Kamakura, away from the hill where the famous hollow Buddha exhales, and inhales strings of tourists from the guarded back door to his gigantic inside. There is a wooded ascent lost in smoke, sent twisting by disconnected women, purifying their raiment and passing their hands through the drift from holy insects, incense sticks, 
They have just plunged into open-air altars of sand before they intend to climb further with something shining in their arms along the serpentine rock path and its adjacent brook, which, interrupted by tiny waterfalls, is rimmed as the path is rimmed by foot-high golden bodhisattvas extending over and punctuating every visible centimeter of wold and swale, thousands of bodhisattvas sitting naked in shadow or slashed with bright air draped in cloth bibs bearing calligraphic prayers or infant clothing or strung with dried flowers and pairs of small shoes, a few propping cheap Sienna reproductions of generic mother and child, crowding each other so seriously that no ground is apparent anywhere but for the dim path rising under thick branches or umbrella pines and cedars segue to larches at the fifth station and everywhere else, bodhisattvas, each placed by a woman whose child was stillborn or aborted or wounded fatally in birth next to another left by another. And this for many years until every geography unjammed by tree thrusts has fallen occasion to the sculptured elegies alike as newborns and repeated like a mantra so to seem from a distance in winter a golden death cap pulled over the knob of a mountain, a cap woven as in a tail from the wounds of women, strangers to each other, but mourning the same dispossession, more women, women weeping than any dying emperor or any man has known. <coughs> And I'm going to shift back to Judy after a poem published by the fabulous Omnidon Press. Woo! Um, and a collection called Spectacle and Pigsty in a collaboration I did with Kyoko Yoshida of a great Japanese poet named Kawamamura. And it's bilingual edition, which um, cost Ken years of his life. <laughs> and there's some on sale back here. <laughs> <laughs> Barely hinged. Kewal Namura. Now in persistent strings of rain, I've seen a bird fluttering, gone from sight, which is to say persistently, I've seen a bird fluttering, I've seen a fluttering bird gone from sight, so to speak, in another incantation, seen I've gone from sight, a bird fluttering, and so it goes in vain. Seen a bird fluttering, I've gone from sight, quiet around here. It's completely quiet. A bird, I've gone from sight, seen fluttering, reverie enough. A bird gone from sight, seen fluttering. I've embraced or engraved, fluttering. I've gone from sight, seeing a bird, reverie enough. Fluttering, seeing a bird, I've gone quiet here. It's completely quiet, gone from the sight, fluttering eye, a bird seen. And so it goes in vain, gone from sight, a bird, so to speak, in another incantation, a bird fluttering, seen. I've gone from sight, which is to say persistently, a bird, I, fluttering, gone from sight, seen now, in persistent strings of rain. Now, Judy. Um... All right, all right. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll go from the bird to um, uh, out in the world poem. Um, I have a new collection of poetry forthcoming. It's called Tree Line, and it's uh, tree as in uh, the natural world, and line as in poetic lineage. And I like to think of myself as writing myself into the lineage of the ascetic poets. <laughs> so this is a poem called Li Po Loved Two Things. And it starts with a translation of Basho Haiku. High as a skylark, I rest in the sky of this mountain pass. 
Lupo loved two things, waterfalls and drinking. When the emperor summoned him, Lupo was drunk in a bar. He wrote back, excuse me from your court today, I am a drunken hermit. <laughs> Worn like these stones, water rushes past me. Branches and trunks form dams, those leaning together houses, the fish stalks disappearing, a tree standing still in the flooded creek. I left because there were whole towns without work. Houses worth less than the water heater, fishing hamlets without roads, houses clustered around docks, docks clustered around fish houses. We were a generation that shipped out there are a thousand songs about us, sung by those who stayed. The news says they found growing numbers of cod. To me now, the stocks are still down. Twenty years dropping, and twenty years when not one boat went out. It's not that they're fishing again, it's just that they might. And my laced arm friends, my Mooseland woods, could we come back? Could they stitch us into the salt air, the wind bent pines, a kitchen table, a mist damp coat, the lingering blue dust? Are they counting us? If this is the middle path, if I had to fight, if I were called to court, I'd fight with sticks with ice cold water, with direct sunlight, with reckless windspun seeds, the outer edge of a kite tail, the fairgrounds, the spinning teacups, if I had to pick two things to love. Basho looks down over the falls in another country, hundreds of years later, picking flowers for Li Po. Fish don't have ears but they make love songs to find other fish. Water is 800 times more dense than air. The body of a fish is as dense as water. Fish don't hear sound waves, they absorb them. <coughs> so one of the hard things about translating it is the break, the cutting word, ya, which counts as a syllable, but doesn't mean anything other than kind of grammatical structure. So this poem is called A Breaking Word. There's that part after Basho writes, Old Still Pond, of pressing a fingerprint into wet clay, where the word ya holds a space in the air, a cloud changes shape in the sky. Make it a dash, a murmur, a breath on the inhale. This old pond, so many have tried to open. A sigh, a hum, a frog jumps in. Sound of water, says Haas. Plop, says Watts. Kerplunk, says Ginsburg. <laughs> Um, not all of my, a lot of my poems aren't narratively true, um, kind of stitched together. Uh, this, however, is a true story. <laughs> and I'm taking, I'm working with a character dictionary, Japanese English character dictionary, and the top part of the poem has the characters read in isolation, and uh, in the second part of the poem they're read as a group, kind of as a phrase. <clears throat> the poem is called how to find a man up to the task. This body is measured in sugar, in days of butter, in soft flour, in honey, in ground sesame. Ki, a container. Ryo, a measure. Fu, to erase, to take back, to make into nothing. Count me aged and aging, count me calcium and marrow and churned butter, pound me into the bed springs, into cotton and late night radio, into dulse and kelp and dry leaves. On Barrington Street, handsome, 
Dirt in his nails and clear, strong eyes. He's holding a cardboard sign. Broke, hungry, will work for food, beer, or money. Kiro makeru. A container, a measure to make into nothing. Also means too smart for success or too beautiful for your own good. He sees me watching him and flips over the sign. Quality sperm available, bargain price, everything included. Ready? One more. Okay. Okay, so I'm following Basho's route, and we know that Basho wrote Okuno Hosoi Michi, and he had a traveling companion named Sora. And in the early 20th century, Sora, Sora's journal about that journey was discovered. And so now we have Basho's journal and Sora's, and we can compare them to see what did Basho change in the four years that he was editing Okuno Hosoi Michi. Um, <clears throat> So um, one of the things that they did, which was not uncommon at all in the pilgrimage, was to write, like the monks did, a, a message on their hat. No home in heaven and earth. On this path we go by two. We go two together. Um, and Basho has a kind of a, a famous haiku of after him and Sora had a fight. Um, those words were taken off of his hat. Um, and people use this poem as an example of, was he really a monk? Or was his true path poetry? So, this poem tangentially relates to that haiku. It's called Walk the Line. <clears throat> Walk the Line. Bend the spine of a thesaurus, shadow map, guide of distances, atlas of cities. If this book were a bridge, I would trust my weight to it. Late bloomer, mountain azalea, dwarf pine. The letters didn't always make words. There were years and years when they just stayed letters. I have come to fill the moss under the water. <coughs> I have come to put my feet in the creek. Basho and Sora on pilgrimage, right on their hats. No home in heaven or earth. On this path we go, two together. Monks on pilgrimage, by two we go. The monk alone, but with the Dharma. <coughs> Basho alone, but with Sora. Me in the library with 20,000 other fools. And a mother who wants a postcard. A line on a Christmas note. A baby girl to walk. A two-wheel bicycle, a spelling bee, a pirouette, a finger to trace the letters across the page, the letters to make a song. Some say they fought. Some say they parted in anger. After Sora stayed behind, Basho let the words, by two we go, wash off his hat in the rain. At graduation, my mother, hands in the air, shouts, it's a miracle, a miracle. <laughs> the Japanese, it's um, like, they had this expression, arigato meowaku. Um, it's like, thanks, but <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> um, with all these presents people are giving him. Um, <clears throat> I'm working on a, uh, a, a, um, a selected poems of a, a man I think is one of the... Um, most exciting contemporary artists, that are literary artists that I know. His name is Gozo Yoshimasu, um, and um, his work has become increasingly um, complex, incorporating um, lots of different languages, French and English, and it makes um, rhymes between Chinese radicals. He uses three different kinds of Japanese script and Ruby text, and, and oh, I, I have a I'll send a little copy around, and um, <clears throat> and it's in different colors, and um, he chants it, and uh, uses fetish objects in performance. It's really hard to translate, and I've 
um, I've asked uh, a group of real hotshot Japanese translators, younger translators mostly, to, um, to translate um, his work, to try to bring into English what hasn't been, been rendered yet. And I think it's going to be a really exciting book. And also with the notes to the book, we're sort of metamorphosing the notes, so, um, so instead of conventional notations, um, they look more like the poem. So I'm going to read you the note to one to the poem that's going around right now, which is a naked memo. This translation of Yoshimasu Gozo's naked. Oh, um, no, this can be too much pressure on you. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> um, this translation of Yoshimasu Gozo's naked memo is more breaking ground than a ground-breaking translation. It calls for more work, work in teams, to complete. On the first page, the eyes could be those of the seamstress or the crimson boat. This translation ties them to the suggestion of a figure, vague but definitely <coughs> human. Preserving ambiguity would be ideal. The following line from the second page witnesses the length to which the translator must go in order to preserve it. Quote, I thought whiz per a voice hair air could be heard. Unquote. Yoshimasu utilizes a type of wordplay known as ateji, replacing the characters typically used for writing a word with homophonous, graphically distinct characters, a kind of visually dissonant homo, homophonographic play. He replaces the Japanese, and actually this is a little bit like um, what we've seen in English um, um, uh, uh, gangster movies, where that gangster talk with, with the rhyme thing, that it sounds like what it rhymes. Um, it's a little bit like that. Um, he replaces the Japanese verb for whisper, sasayaku, with the following characters separated by kutoten, Japanese commas. See those? <laughs> Literally, left, left, arrow, suffering. To suture the gap created by this compulsory choice means to create new forms of wordplay, hence whiz, Per for whisper and homophonic resonances of hair, air, and heard in place of heard. Yoshimasu graphs Chinese derived kanji characters over casual forms. Caution the parenthetical and bracketed insertions of Yoshimasu's own glosses, sometimes deceptive, sometimes playful, sometimes simply saying the same thing differently. Finally, left is a smattering of Japanese characters that could have been removed characters. The first pronounced frequently Romanized the first pronounced O frequently Romanized wo is a grammatical particle designating the word it follows as the recipient of the action that follows. Yoshimasu makes marked use of it and includes it in moments when it is unnecessary, emphasizing the objectness of concepts. And I think I've, so you sort of get the idea. Um, it's really complicated and it's really fun, and it'll be a very novel around the country in different performances. Uh, this um, they um, some I know some people here have seen Eko and Koma, and I've talked to them. Uh, while I was watching them for a period of uh, days, uh, they had a, um, a gig at the Walker Art Center um, where they performed eight hours a day. It's very slow dance. In the middle of the stage was um, um, a lot of burnt raven's feathers. And there on either side of this heap, um, moving very slowly, almost, almost seeming to become aware of each other at times, and almost touching and then falling away and sometimes seeming like they've forgotten about the others. Very underworld um, 
Eurydice, Orpheus kind of thing. And I noticed that um, there was one person who was there um, for a, a many hours with me. I, I, was, I, I had nothing else to do, so I was there for most of eight hours a day for three days. And another person was there for several hours a day for a number of days. And afterwards, I found out that the woman, her son, had been in a, 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 a fire and was in a coma. And she was spending her time either in the hospital with him, who she couldn't reach, um, or watching this performance, which for her s spoke, seemed to metaphorize um, her relationship with her child. And that's part of the power of their performance, their work, is how open the metaphor is that people find really different things in it that um, that are deep things that they need. Faithfulness. A life might change. A person's life might change. With a gesture or shaping phrase, an albumum flare, and gentleness from which gestate bodies wake supple, odd as an oyster. Her nostrils dilation, slow contraction of his ribs, breeze in the mulch, life breath. As she clutches herself, his thumb palpates her jaw and neck, marmorial contour, the long curving spine trough, each lumbar vertebrae, <coughs> one by one, distinguishable undulations blade out from his shoulders, her averted heel drawn up by ligaments in her calf, so between them, space, a universe in zygote, might be reconceived as a means of access, flesh realm, blind, finding flesh blindly, feeling forward the apical arm, spasms in pre-light, feet flat under her hips, palms down, the whole frame lifting ventral upward and buckling as though newborn or unused to this weight or sequence, a tendon behind the synovial bursa, exquisitely testing its range, leg folded under her body, swaying, rises again, spavined thighs, elbows incurved against the joint, probing air with his face, his lissom trunk dragged forward on arm pinned, shoulder stumps, broken momentums, thigh waves from pelvic socket as they fall awkward to the proscenium, clavicle pockets of shadow, open mouthed, foot cock, their heads arched back on throats, rhymed, mouth and eyes capsized, and four buttocks, a madrigal pair, shifting <coughs> equilibrium of force as he disencoils her waist, a fountain, her nape goes slack, and hair sweeps the floor, such a solemnity in becoming aware of emotion while silence choose edges of water, sound, night, wind, his hands ardent, vulnerable. Great toe withdrawn from the immensity of contact, clockwork, articulate, fan-fingered, imploring first figures spent and mutual with a world, two bodies releasing the event. The Italian had on silver high heels, her hair tied in seashells. While Sensei talked, she whispered to me the important parts. I am an old man carrying a dozen apples. I am walking through the train station struck by lightning. Grass has light, milk has cream. These are the things I need to remember. Foil wrap wings, birds with fragile beaks, the angle of the earth to the, su to the sun. These are the primary colors. Plum, pine, bamboo, liquor, denim, daybreak. The Italian plum blossoms finally in April. She says, I was like, beautiful. Putting in what was missing. The high heels, the apples. I was like to mean the whole of me. 
So I studied at the Ono studio um, before Kazuo Ono passed away and after he passed away. And most of the time the main teacher was Yoshito Ono, his son, who continues to dance and uh, is a central person in the Butoh world. Um, I think it's open for discussion whether or not Butoh is actually a bigger movement outside of Japan than in Japan. Um, I think some Buto hot spots are in Poland, Germany, San Francisco, um, as well as Tokyo, of course. But um, when I went to art school, I thought everyone would be pretty sophisticated to Buto, but it was kind of hard finding people that had heard of it. Um, so a lot of Americans and international people make kind of pilgrimages to Kazo Ono's studio, and there's a little bit of that here. Um, and in some of this poem, I'm speaking, and the voice is speaking as Kazo Ono. The Ono Studio. When he couldn't walk, he would sit and dance with his hands dashing like birds. Now, at over a hundred, he is sleeping in the house next door. We take off our shoes and stretch. His son writes the characters. Snow, flower, moon. Some die like snow, he says. It's beautiful at dusk, and then the next day, where's the snow? Or a flower, blooming all in one season. Or the moon, little by little, waning. After floating his hands in the air above his head, angling them out in ragged lines. Balls of raw silk, a snail in a shell. He started to cry. Not a little bit, but tears streaking down his face. Window frames, rooftops, fences and fields, bony hips, knobby knees, the dancing Antonio Marseille. I have torn off all the layers. I have looked straight into, into the darkness. I have called the spirits of the dead. I have let them take my voice, take my body. I have brought back what I have lost and danced with them here. My mother, my sister, the years hungry and burned. One girl said, he's crying because he can't talk. Another offered, he's crying because he can't dance. In this studio, I have laid down my fears. I have been easily hurt. Snow melts, flowers bloom. There is getting up off the floor, the third pine, the ground, the sky, the space between. This is where I have danced. This is where I leave you from. Thanks very much. Sees what I'm doing, says, no, not that would look better like this. Pretty good with my hands. I can do this, demonstrating. Or this, but the source is body core and hand held out, demonstrating, is always greediness. I prefer this spinning hand inward. I moved my arm that way, extending it, until I realized I can move it instead from here, disarticulating <coughs> her shoulder. I ruined it, she says in English. 